You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So from my understanding of today's topic, um, we had some uh, questions regarding um, why chemotherapy fails and, you know, what, why do cancer cells become resistant to mm. chemotherapy? Yeah. And I think what that requires is a bit of an overview of what cancer is. Okay. So um, I think we should start with that. Okay. Um, and then we can move on to, you know, some of the specific mechanisms and how you can get over that. Okay. So uh, in short, cancer is a disease of the stem cells, stem, um, adult stem cells typically, although um, there are certain variants of cancers that are caused by embryonic stem cells. Um, we're concerned more with adult stem cells. So adult stem cells are stem cells that um, create the bulk of our, our bodies. They uh, reproduce tissue throughout our lifetime to replace dying and old tissue. Um, all of the tissues in our body, all of the cells have what's referred to as a Hayflick number. Mm. And a Hayflick number basically is a number that allows that cell to reproduce a certain amount of times before it starts breaking down mm. and, and goes through a pre-programmed death process, okay. apoptosis. Um, the Hayflick number is how many times a single cell is allowed to copy itself. Mm. So it's a pre-programmed lifespan. Mm. The stem cells when they get turned on, they tell you how many cells to copy. Mm -hmm. So let's not confuse those two. Oh, okay. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. So um, when a stem cell gets turned on, it produces a certain amount of cells to, um, to replace the damaged tissue. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's, a, it's like a wound healing process. Let's say you cut yourself on your hand, then the stem cells in the uh, skin um, near to the cut will produce a bunch of different uh, cells and those cells will um, then get differentiated into the type of cell they need to be to replace the damage, whether they're, you know, epithelial or blood vessel cells or, you know, hair cells or whatever they may be. Mm. Um, those stem cells will produce those uh, cells. And then the cells will go through a process where they get what's called differentiated, where they become the type of cell they're supposed to be. And then they are given this Hayflick number, mm, mm -hmm. which is different for every type of cell. Okay. So, you know, things like nerve cells that only reproduce once in a while have a low Hayflick number, whereas intestinal cells on your, your mucous membrane, for example, that get uh, um, shed every, you know, three, four days, they have a, a very high Hayflick number. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that all cells in our body, with the exception of the stem cells, the adult stem cells, have a Hayflick number. Okay. So they're pre-programmed to die. Okay. So cancer is immortal. In other words, it can live forever. We have samples from Henrietta Lack that are still alive, you know, many, many years later in the labs and being used as cell lines, even though she died from her cancer a long time ago. Like 60 or 70 years Something ago? Something like that, yes. Um, and so cancer cells just keep going. In fact, um, originally um, when they created uh, insulin um, for diabetics, they use cancer cells and these cancer cells basically cause the, uh, basically they, they, they created cancer cells that produce a high amount of insulin and then they just grew them in a petri dish and these cells constantly, constantly produce insulin. Mm -hmm. That was 70 uh, years ago, by the way, that she died. 70 years yeah. ago, wow, well, yeah. I saw some of her chromosomes and some of them, mm -hmm. or, or some of her cells had like a hundred, hundred and so chromosomes, mm -hmm. <laughs> crazy. Mm -hmm. So they've really developed over time. Mm -hmm. um, so these stem cells uh, uh, are the only cells that are immortal and can live forever. Mm -hmm. So what happens in cancer is the stem cells, or at least the cells that are early precursors, in other words, cells that have not yet received either differentiation or they've got some differentiation, but they haven't received their Hayflick number yet. Mm -hmm. These are the cells that become cancer cells. Okay. And because of that, they keep growing and producing more cells. Um, and that is basically what cancer is. It's yep. a disease of the stem cells. It's just turned on and not turning off right. and has become immortal and right. just kind of overgrows. Yes, yeah. so the, the bulk of cancers, um, are not stem cells. In fact, stem cells happen on average about one, one in every five to six million cells. Mm. So one stem cell will produce that many 
cancer cells mm. potentially. Okay. So those cancer cells can't really grow and metastasize, but the stem cells can. Now we know that because uh, when they first started doing uh, animal experiments, what they'd do is they'd cut out human tumors and they would try to transplant them into animals. And they would only grow in these animals if they got at least, you know, five or six million cells. Mm. If they got less than that, then these tumors would fail to transplant. Mm. So then they knew that it was only the stem cells that can metastasize. Mm. These are studies from back in the 50s. Mm. And so now what we know is that when we take a tumor sample, um, we know that there's going to be some stem cells in there. So what we do is we sequence that tumor sample and we find that, uh, you know, we find what genes are causing those mutations. Sure, that makes sense. Yes, exactly. So then, then when we come up with a treatment protocol, we, we have the, you know, the, the mutations that those stem cells have so we can target them. Mm -hmm. Well, as you say, now what we do, that isn't necessarily well, standard care. Does. Right, let's differentiate. Precision medicine. So what chemotherapy does, uh, chemotherapy is based on a lot of um, uh, what we call cell cycle inhibitors um, there's, and metabolic inhibitors. And what they do is when the cell is reproducing itself and copying its DNA and about to divide as cancer cells constantly do, and standard chemotherapy drugs uh, typically inter interfere with um, the process. Mm -hmm. Often they interfere with um, the separation of the chromosomes, so they get stuck mm -hmm. together and die, um, or they interfere with the microtubules, uh, that were some of the earlier chemotherapy drugs. Um, and there's a variety of mechanisms that, can, that uh, chemotherapy drugs do. Um, but one thing is consistent, um, and some of them interfere with the transcription processes. One thing is consistent with all chemotherapy drugs, standard chemotherapy drugs, is that they interfere with cells as they're rapidly reproducing. Okay. So they only affect cells that happen to be rapidly reproducing and growing while the drug is in your body. Okay, so in that very active growth stage In that only. growth stage, yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they just don't, don't see it or don't... They just don't affect it. Right, okay. Yeah. Because of the, the mechanism that they exactly. work on. Got so it. if a stem cell has produced a bunch of cancer cells and then it has stopped producing them, um, these cancer cells will keep on growing. And then when you get the chemotherapy drug, it will kill all of the cancer cells, but it won't kill the actual stem cells that have caused the growth of those cancers or that have produced the bulk of the cancers. Got it. And we know this because uh, another way of showing this, sorry, is um, you know, when you get many different types of chemotherapy, you lose your hair. Mm -hmm. And um, that's because it, uh, the chemotherapy affects the bulk of the, um, mm -hmm. you know, the active product of the stem cells. Mm -hmm. However, as soon as you go off the chemotherapy, your hair starts growing back. And that, mm -hmm. that is proof that the chemotherapy is not affected the stem cells in the in the roots of the hair. Mm -hmm. So it took out some of the 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 rapidly reproducing cancer cells, right. but not those stem cells that are going to just send some more. Right. Well, in the hair, it's not cancer. I know. They're I'm just back fast to growing the cancer cells. Here again. They're, they're fast growing cells. Yes. And that's why I like to use that as an example. Sure. Yeah. Because your hair is constantly growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you're saying, it's a perfect example of how if that's what's happening to the hair follicles or hair cells, that's the same thing that's happening to your cancer cells. Exactly. Right. So the rapidly reproducing ones are being taken out, but the yep. ones that were in that quiescent or, or kind of sleepy state yep. are not rapidly reproducing. Yep. Like or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, occasionally I take a note or two. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, what else would you like us to know? That's how we talked about how cancer how cancer, uh, what it really is, the disease right. of the stem cells. Right. Um, and so, what... so what the problem with standard chemotherapy is, it's only going to kill these rapidly reproducing cells. And, you know, many of our body cells are rapidly reproducing, such mm. as, you know, such as the uh, intestinal lining mm. and the lining, you know, the skin lining of, of certain organs. Mm -hmm. So, and then immune cells, of course. Mm. So when you take chemotherapy, it's going to kill a lot of these healthy mm. cells as well. Mm. Um, so that's one of the negative that's side why effects. we have yeah that's why there's all these nasty it, side effects and it doesn't affect the stem cells right which is the stuff that's right. really we need to address it, exactly mm -hmm. otherwise exactly. it's just one kind of 
you're on chronic chemotherapy, exactly. I guess. Yeah, you have to be. And you can only take chemotherapy for so long. So right. ch chemotherapy inevitably fails. Right. It, because your body just really can't tolerate exactly. continuing with it. No. Right. But wait, there's hope. There's Immunotherapy, the, precision oncology, yes. targeted therapies. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that so standard chemotherapy uh, again we want to champion the fact that it ever existed because mm -hmm. it certainly yeah. helped many people through through the years to have a much longer and it, life than they and would it have. still has a role in reducing the bulk of the tumor. Mm. So there are some some times when chemotherapy is warranted. Still, yeah, I, I think I think we're going to see uh, a lot of new combinations mm -hmm. with immunotherapy and targeted therapy mm -hmm. and chemotherapy. And the benefit there, of course, is that because you're having less chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, the side effects, mm -hmm. the symptoms would be less, but the benefit. We, we would also be have a whole new class of drugs called conjugates mm -hmm. that are antibodies that specifically have a chemotherapy agent attached to them, mm -hmm. and so they will bind onto a cell surface protein unique to a cancer cell and deliver that chemotherapy payload just to that cell. Ooh, so it's so like targeted targeted chemotherapy. chemotherapy. We also have targeted radiation, which is mm. uh, theranostics. Mm. So um, I don't think we'll ever see the end of chemotherapy. I think it's always mm. going to have a role. I but think it's, it's evolving. Developing. It's evolving. Yeah. I think systemic standard chemotherapy is really gone the way of uh, the dogs. Well, it should. And I mean, there are some situations it can be used. I mean, as you can see with the with the, um, the pemetrexed, um, you know, carboplatin and, and immunotherapy protocol for lung cancer, mm -hmm. it can be very effective, mm -hmm. much more effective than just having the immunotherapy itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it can prime the cancer cells, weaken the cancer cells so they're more susceptible. Right. But again, it's the co combination. It's the combination. Mm -hmm. it's As opposed to just chemo. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, as you were saying a little bit earlier today, um, in order for your oncologist to know what uh, other treatments they could offer you, uh, genetic testing is required. Yes, definitely. So chemotherapy and radiation are things that they can offer you uh, without genetic testing. Mm -hmm. And so depending on where you live and the, the budget of your healthcare system or your insurance provider, mm -hmm. uh, that might be uh, what your oncologist has to offer you. Exactly. But do not confuse that with uh, meaning that there aren't better treatment options or many other treatment mm -hmm. options for you once you've got some genetic testing. Mm -hmm. So was there more you wanted to say about why chemo might fail? Or, um, well, that's pretty chemo... well it. That's, okay. you know, that's the mechanism. We also know okay. that um, stem cells have certain what, what we call efflux pumps that can remove the chemotherapy drugs better than standard cancer cells. Oh. Um, yeah. Ah, which is good if if you didn't want the chemotherapy there. That's a kind of a ha it's a handy evolutionary mechanism. It is. It is. But when That's you do, exactly if only is. you could kind of let the stem cells know. No, let this happen. We want this. <laughs> yeah. Well, then they know that they're they're marked for destruction. Yeah. and They're going to take it personally. And it's a battle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's really interesting. I appreciate why you wanted us to know about what cancer is, mm -hmm. um, you know, and how it forms and that information about the Hayflick number, because that really does help us to understand yeah. why uh, targeting the stem cells are so important exactly. and why chemotherapy stops working exactly. for people. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Alex. That's very helpful information. I'm sure that'll really benefit a lot of people. Oh. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions about your cancer treatment or you want to make sure you're doing your best for cancer prevention or to avoid recurrence of cancer, really um, the best things that you can do for yourself are visit Alex's YouTube channel, thecancerguy.com, or arrange for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Alex directly. And that way you can get all of the information about your specific case, uh, your type of cancer, and, and your body. And and uh, best practices and even the newest treatments that could be a benefit for you that your oncologist could prescribe for you. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next Thursday on Ask Alex. Thank you for watching CTOM TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.